I believe that there are more mystics than, than, um, than mechanics in the spiritual life, but they don't know it. I believe that almost everybody that I have ever talked to out of any institution or, or beyond any boundary will relate at least one instance in life when they had a very impacting understanding that there was more than this life. I'm convinced that uh, people have more consciousness of, of uh, life beyond the life in front of them than they realize. I see that as a wisdom call, tap, tap. There's more here, tap, tap. You're not listening, tap, tap. That somehow or other, I know that I had my first um, consciousness of the presence of God when I was 12 or 13 and knew that there was enveloping me some sort of, of presence. I, I, I wouldn't have used the word energy then. Now I say it was an energy. It, it, it touched something in me and I touched something in that. And then I came to the monastery and deepened it. That, that, that presence then became not a cartoon figure of God, not God the grandfather, God the warrior, God the saint, but, but Godness. And then it, uh, it became beyond the, uh, the anthropomorphizing, making God uh, a, a human being writ large. I didn't need it anymore. I didn't need the face. I knew the feeling. I didn't, I didn't need uh, the, the conversation. I saw the results. I, I, I didn't need the magic because I saw the strength. I saw. Our words get so destroyed. Look, God. Just use the word God. Who, what am I supposed to, what have I been told uh, by all these extra words that God is? Well, uh, God, God is certainly a magician. You know, I, I mean, uh, I, my, my daughter has cancer and I, every morning I go to the well and I read the gospel and, um, and, and, I, and, I, and I pray that, uh, that she'll get, get uh, cured. But she didn't get cured. What? I went every day for a year. I, I, I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't go dancing. All I did was pray. What did I do wrong? Or we say, well, God, God is a puppeteer. If I just pray the right prayers, the right number of times, do the fast as much as I can, uh, I, uh, God will pull the, the, the strings in my behalf. God will, will see that the puppet that is me, the puppeteer now, will take care of everything else. Uh, God, God is some sort of a vending machine. I put 10 Hail Marys in, I get uh, a, 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 a divorce out. Something terrible happened. God the warrior, we, we, uh, we've, we've been taught of God being on our side. And, and we have managed to corrupt that to the point where we make God the warrior, uh, the God who makes uh, red lights turn green. By the time I get to the corner, oh, please God, Turn that, make that light turn green. And then you see when we mush all of that stuff together and it has, it makes no sense, then you come face to face with, well then who is God? What is God? God is not a magician. God is the one who companions us through life. God is the one who companions us through this cancer. God is the one who, who helps us walk away from the cemetery and go on. God is that energizing presence who carries me, lifts me, walks with me, is my crutch as I'm moving up the mountain and down the dale in life. One day up, one day down. How do I get through it? 
because God is with me and I believe that this which is good will everything in the end be good. And I will walk toward it. I'll go through this cancer. I'll go through that baby's death. I will go through the 110 fires that are destroying people's homes everywhere and know that there is still life, still good, still purpose for me. And in my opinion, that is the presence of God. That is the source of hope. That is the truth toward which we all move. That in the end, all this goodness will be good. Everybody knows that magic is powered by something that is not magical. Mystery has no conscious empowerment by us at all. Mystery is that which we know exists because we see it in some manifestation. It is, it is demonstrated to us, but, but it is way beyond anything that up to this point, at least, we can use to explain its presence. You know, like the explanation of electricity uh, it changed the whole world. The entire world was changed. And, but it didn't take away from the mystery. It only increased it. Where did that come from? How was that harnessed? What is it enabling? And we have a whole generation now who have no idea what is going on behind, behind the screen in these computers. I mean, way beyond us. We're going with it, and we're happy for what good it's doing. But in terms of being you and I being able to empower it, not at all. But within another 50 years, everybody in every generation will take it for granted. They've all, they will have all been educated in it. So m mystery is the thing that is, is demonstrable, is present, cannot be explained, at least now, but has some sort of powerful other, other existence existence. And that's enough to know. That's enough to know. I didn't, I didn't give up all the light bulbs in my, in my bedroom because I, I didn't know how, how uh, he did it. <laughs> I mean, come on, get real. This, this, this whole thing is a, is a ladder to the center of the mystery. I wrote a book called Between the Dark and the Daylight on the paradoxes of life. That book is actually my statement of where God is and, and how I know that God is indeed everywhere. Very simple book again, probably too simple, but this whole question of, of um, God sitting on a cloud is, is such a diminishment of Godness. The people don't, people don't realize that they're missing the other 95% of this sense of presence among us. Where is this presence? It's, it's between me and the person I love. It's, be, it's between me and the parrot I own. It's between me and the, and the, the food somebody gives me. It's between me and, and the, where you have a government holy enough to give first thought to that, that permanent underclass. Who is the permanent underclass that are the unemployed, the underemployed, the handicapped, the elderly, the sick? You, I don't care how many jobs you have. You can't give one to them. You're going to have to give your awareness of the presence of God in them that draws you to, to be a co-creator. This God, when, when whatever whatever the first moment of creation was or is or can be ever deciphered, the fact is that it was unfinished. God did not make you a Disneyland anywhere. And our role is to finish that goodness. We are co-creators. This is a very humble God that we're working with. 
And so to reduce that God to some sort of whip yielding, rule keeping, uh, destroyer, I, I can't go there. I can't go there.